Hello, welcome back. Thank you so much for being here. Today we are finally doing my year and eyeshadow palette ranking. So before we get into it, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel before you leave. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy and let's get into it. So it turns out I tried 38 eyeshadow palettes in 2023. So let's just hop right into the ranking. Coming in at number 38 is from Huda Beauty, and this is one of their Glow Wish Micro Mini Natural Eyeshadow Palettes. They released three different quads, and I ended up picking up two of them. This is in Moss. So they did release three of these quads. One is supposed to be for blue eyes, one for brown eyes, and I think one for hazel eyes, if I remember correctly but I thought this one was pretty. I don't mind the color story. I can definitely get a cute look with it, but honestly, the formula in here is really not good. And this is not what I expect from Huda Beauty. The mattes in here are incredible incredibly dusty. There is only one shimmer and it's a deep dark shimmer so I don't really think the color story makes the most sense. I think we could have done a much lighter green to make this look really pretty. When I was working with these they are definitely a little bit more on the buildable side. You've really got to work to get the pigment to the level that you want it. Again the mattes are so incredibly dusty and the color story wasn't isn't ideal so I find that this can look muddy very, very easily, and I just don't like that. I don't, I do not think the quality of these is worth it, especially for the price tag. And for that reason, coming in at number 37, we have the other glowish quad I picked up, and this one is in the shade Clay. This one is ranking ahead of the other one simply because I think the color story is a little bit more cohesive. This Shimmer in here is much better as an all over lid shade and of course the orangey tones do work well with my blue eyes. So for that reason I am ranking this one one slot higher but again exact same issues with the formula. The mattes just incredibly dusty and the shimmers really aren't that sparkly or impactful. I do not think the quality of these is there at all, especially for the price tag. Coming in at number 36 is from Rare Beauty. This is the Give Yourself Grace eyeshadow palette. So this is the first Rare Beauty palette I've picked up in this format. They did have some of those Confident Energy palettes a few years ago, which were really, really nice. This I just don't love. First of all, the layout, I see what they were trying to do. It's cute, but I just don't love it. And I feel like this glitter right in the center is really unnecessary. I think this would have been way better if it was one of the matte browns or one of the shades that we would use as a transition shade. So one shade that we would use all the time. Whereas the glitter I feel like is unnecessarily huge. We could have had a much more functional shade right in the middle or we could have had just more shades in general. The mattes are very, very light. You've really got to work to build them up. These other metallics here in the middle, they're okay, but they're not amazing. And then this glitter really just ruins the whole thing. This is an incredibly messy, messy glitter. And again, I don't know why it takes up most of the palette, but it is a very messy glitter. If you're gonna use it, you really need to use a glitter glue because otherwise it's just going to be everywhere. I just, I love her beauty. I think they have amazing, amazing products, but for me, this is just a miss. I don't like the format. The regular shadows I just don't think are the best quality, and I really don't like the layout and having the glitter in the very center seems a bit like a waste to me. So I don't love that. And coming in at number 35, we have a palette from House Labs. This is the eyeshadow library palette in volume one, the super neutrals. This is one I tried quite recently, but they did release two of these for holiday. And I was really excited because I really wanted House Labs to release eyeshadows. They have a lot of other really amazing products. So I was excited for this. Unfortunately, I'm a little disappointed. The mattes I kind of like because they are that sort of cream to powder formula that I just I go nuts for so I was really excited for that but the thing is they're not very buildable and they blend away too easily so that I found a little bit frustrating the shimmers in here actually are super beautiful they are very very metallic very reflective and beautiful but because I only like half the palette only half of it really really works for me I just I do not think this is worth the price tag these 
retail for around $50 and it's just not worth it. The packaging is beautiful. Again, I love that the mattes are that cream to powder formula, but if they were a little bit easier to work with and didn't blend away when you're working with them, I think this would be a hit. But for me, unfortunately, it just wasn't my favorite. Coming in at number four is actually from Natasha Denona and this is the Mini Trio Chrome Palette. This palette is not bad quality by any means. And this is one that I initially was not going to pick up because I don't really wear blue eyeshadow ever, if at all. But once Natasha released it, I wasn't gonna pick it up. And then my husband said to me, you're a makeup channel, you need to review the palette. So I did order it, but it took the longest a Natasha palette has ever taken to get to me. And so by the time it actually did get here, I knew there was no point in really posting a review. I think this is a pretty palette. The quality is great. I think as far as blues go, Natasha would be the one to create high quality blues. The problem is I just don't use it that much. I don't wear blue eyeshadow very often. This probably was a waste for me to purchase. I did create a look recently where I used this one as a liner and this one all over the lid and that was quite pretty and I can see myself doing that again. I can also see myself using this to experiment with more blues in the future, but unfortunately I just don't reach for it because I really don't love the color story and I don't love blues. This is one I probably could have skipped on, but the quality is good. Coming in at number 33 is from Pat McGrath, and this is the Bijou Brilliance Jeweled Temptation Palette. So she released two of these larger palettes for holiday. While I love that we get two blushes in here, and I'm very excited about that, I don't think the eyeshadows in here are her best quality. These are not her Italian formula. They are made in the U.S., this color story in particular really just isn't my favorite, and if you cover up this top row, you you just have a very neutral palette. I mean, the shadows are nice, it's just that there's really not much to work with the purple. This just isn't my favorite that she's ever done, and again, it's not the best quality. This doesn't compare to her mothership quality by any means, but it also doesn't even compare to her Love Collection formula. So. Unfortunately, this was a miss. The blushes, though, are still top tier. These are her Italian formula blushes. They are still top tier, and I'm still thrilled to have them in my collection because these are shades I didn't have previously, but the eyeshadows were a bit of a miss on this one. Coming in at number 32 is another Natasha Denona palette. Trust me, her other palettes are ranking much higher, but this is the mini pastel. So this one actually released on I think Christmas Day last year. First of all, I don't really wear pastels that often. I do have her larger pastel palette as well and I do enjoy it. I don't wear pastels that often but the main reason this one is ranking lower is because this is not a cohesive color story. This is one that you really need to use as a companion. I do think this shade here, it's gold, but it's got a bit of a mint green shift to it, which is really cool and it makes it work very well with this shade. But otherwise, I just think this is just a simple little companion palette. This really doesn't work well on its own. So for that reason, this one is ranking at number 32. It's just, I wish it was a little more cohesive. Coming in at number 31, is from NARS and this is their Laguna Sunset Quad. So they did release two of these quads this year and this one is my least favorite. The other one I think ranked pretty high. But this is the Laguna Sunset. The reason this one ranked lower, as you can tell, it is four different metallic shades, which I really like to have a matte in a palette to work with. You certainly can use all shimmers, but I really like to work with a matte and I, the fact that I didn't get one in here, it just kind of ruined the effect for me. I think these are pretty shades, but at the end of the day, I don't love when palettes are all metallic or shimmer. Coming in at number 30 is the other large holiday palette from Pat McGrath. This is the Starstruck Splendor palette. This one I liked more because it is a little bit more geared toward fairer skin and honestly this shade here is super beautiful especially when paired with these two pinky shades. I've done that look a few times and I always love it. The blushes in here are gorgeous. I love that this one has green so this one did rank a little bit higher. I just thought it was a little bit prettier, a little bit more fun to work with but I will say the same thing for the eyeshadows. They're just not her best quality. When I say they're not her best quality that does not mean they're bad quality by any means. They are still leaps and bounds above of some other formulas but I just don't think that this is her best work which I just find a little disappointing. However 
This palette is ranking higher because I really love the greens and I love this shade here and this one, this color story in general just works much better for me. So for that reason, this one is at number 30. Okay, coming in at number 29 is from Tarte and this is their Man Eater Nightfall palette. So I was all about picking this one up this year because their fall palette for last year was raved about. So I did not want to miss out this year and I'm glad I didn't. I really like this. I love that we get some cool tones, we get some warm tones, we get some pops of color. The shimmers in here are very beautiful and very metallic. The only reason this one is at number 29 is because these embossed shimmers in here are definitely on the messy side so you really do want to be careful with that. However, they are very, very beautiful. This whole palette is gorgeous, and I love that it makes me want to play with a little bit more color. Not too much, but a little bit more. I think this is beautiful. I think they did a great job with this one. The formula in here is great. I love their Amazonian clay formula, so I'm really glad I picked this one up. At number 28, we have a palette I picked up at the exact same time. This is from Too Faced, and this is the Maple Syrup Pancakes palette, and I think this is so good as well. I'm really surprised with how much I love this one. This is very similar to their typical fall palette formula. I just love it. They did add a blue in this one, which is kind of fun. Not for me, but it is kind of fun. We do have these purples, which again, this shade in the palette every single year really doesn't seem to have a ton of pigment on the eyes. That's the only thing, but every other shade in here is so beautiful. The greens in here are gorgeous. Again, it's not the best formula on the market. I don't think Too Faced has been in that top spot for a very long time, but I still think this palette is really, really pretty. I've reached for it quite often, so I will say I think they did a great job with this one, and... I'm really happy to see a success story from Too Faced. Coming in at number 27 is from Natasha Denona, and this is the Xenon palette. This one I feel like I've had such an interesting experience with. Of course, it is black and white and gray, which is, yes, it's boring, but her formulas are so good. So this is not my favorite color story in my collection. It's not my most reached for a color story, but it is beautiful. The shades in here really are gorgeous, super ionic, gorgeous, gorgeous silver. Cygnus is also a very cool sparkly black, which is stunning. Snowbow is really the only pink shade in here. Neve was described as a baby pink, but it is absolutely not. So when I did my initial review with this palette, the first two looks I created, I used two entirely different sets of shades and got the exact same look. So I really had to push myself to create something different, but I ended up really having a lot of fun with it and loving the looks I came out with. And the formula in here, it is Natasha Denona. She plays around with some really amazing textures and formulas and she nails it. There's nothing bad to say in here about the formula whatsoever. It's just that this isn't my favorite or most reached for a color story, which is why this one is ranking a little lower, but absolutely nothing wrong quality wise. Coming in at number 26 is from Odin's Eye, and this is the Snow Dream palette. So this was my first experience with Odin's Eye eyeshadows, and I think it's very, very pretty. I will say this palette really does lack any sort of depth, and I find the mattes in here really aren't that buildable. I don't know if that is typical for Odin's Eye. I've heard a couple people say that this isn't their usual quality. That being said, I like it. I like that it's easy to work with. I like that it's on the lighter side, given that I'm so fair. What really scores this palette points are these shimmers. These shimmers are absolutely, absolutely stunning. I've had so much fun playing with them. I will say I don't really know what to do with the purple given that there really isn't much to work with for a purple in here, but again, the shimmers in here are just unmatched. They're absolutely stunning, but the mattes are where I think it does fall off a little bit. I just don't think they are the most pigmented buildable shades. However, the shimmers are absolutely stunning and I still would consider purchasing another palette from Odin's Eye in the future. Coming in at number 25 is another quad, and this is from Urban Decay, and this is their Moon Dust Quad. I have Space Rider, which has four different shades. So this has 
Star Cowgirl, Space Cowboy, Wild Dipper Rides Again, and Cosmic Stardust. So you do get a nice range of very light to slightly darker eye toppers. These are toppers, but they are beautiful. They are incredibly sparkly. You can probably see from the palette that they are a little bit messy. I found that there was quite a bit of fallout when I was testing these out. I was applying them with my fingers. Urban Decay did comment to use a wet brush. I did try that and I still find I get the same effect. So regardless, there is a little bit of fallout, but I still think this is very, very pretty and it is a staple if you love these moon dust toppers from Urban Decay. I think buying the palette is a much better value than buying single shades. And I think that, and I think that this is a great little palette and it honestly does sit on my desk so that if I'm ever just looking for that extra sparkle at the end, it's right here. So I do think this is a great little palette and I have really, really been enjoying it. Coming in at number 24 is from ColourPop and this is their Pretty Please palette. This I think is very, very pretty. It's definitely on the lighter side. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous spring palette. I will say these shades on the end that look deeper really aren't so much. They really don't add much depth to the palette. I will say if you really like to add a lot of depth to your looks, this palette is a definite pass. What I love about this is the color story is beautiful, but you actually get three super shocks here. This little column right here is all super shocks. They're so beautiful. They're so fun to play with. And I love how easy this palette makes it to create a look simply just because it is so light and easy and wearable, but it also incorporates pinks and purples. So I think it's absolutely beautiful. I personally really, really enjoy it. I do think it's gorgeous. At number 23, we have a palette from Anastasia. This is their Midi Modern Renaissance. So they released two minis this year, one in Mini Sultry and one in Mini Modern Renaissance. Since I never had Modern Renaissance, I decided to pick this one up. I do think this formula is slightly different than the formulas in their larger palettes. These are a little bit more hard pressed, so there's not nearly as much kick up. Otherwise, the quality seems very, very similar. I really like it. I think it's beautiful. I wish there was maybe one or two more shimmers in here, and I think that's why I don't reach for this as often. There's just something missing in this color story for me, and maybe if I had the larger one, I wouldn't feel that way, but I just feel like there's something missing in this color story, and that's why I don't reach for it nearly as often. I think it's pretty, the quality's great, it's just the shades seem to be missing something for me. That's all. Coming in at number 22 is from MAC, and this is one of their Connecting Color eyeshadow palettes in the shade Rose Lens. So MAC released a whole new line of eyeshadow palettes this year, and I picked up two of the minis. Like I said, this one is in Rose Lens, so it's very, very pinky. You do get one true matte, and then you get a couple of satins, there's some metallics in here. So I think this one is pretty. It's just not the color story I reach for the most often. I thought I would reach for these pinky tones a little bit more. I just wish there was maybe more of a dusty pink or a mid-tone pink as opposed to this hot pink right here. I think that would have pulled things together quite nicely. These palettes are also supposed to be 25% more pigmented than their other shadows. I don't know if that's true. I've tried comparing formulas. They all seem very similar to me, but I do think this is very pretty at the end of the day. It's just not my favorite color story, which is why it's at number 22, but it's still excellent quality. I've really enjoyed it. If you like the color story, I do recommend these. Coming in at number 21 is from Anastasia. This is their Fall Romance Palette. This one surprised me in the very best way. The quality on this is gorgeous. It's their typical ABH quality that we all know and love. I have really enjoyed playing with these shades. Looking at it initially, I am very intimidated by it. It is definitely very deep, way deeper than I would typically go for. There's not a lot of very light transition shades for me to dip into, so this challenges me right away, but this actually is easy enough for me to work with once I get into it, once I start playing with it. I really can make this work on myself, and that makes me so, so happy, so I was very surprised with that. I like that we get some deep purples in here, we get some greens, 
This Fireside Gold Shade is gorgeous. I was so surprised by this one. The only reason there are some that are ranking a little bit higher is because, again, this is a deeper color story, so I have to be really in the mood for that type of look, but otherwise there is nothing in the world wrong with this palette. It is so good and so beautiful. Coming in at number 20 is from Natasha Denona, and this is the mini starlet palette again nothing bad to say about this i think it's absolutely stunning so easy to work with this one came out right before the i need a nude palette and it's a pretty obvious you can't really create a wide range of looks with it but it is so beautiful and for me and my skin tone this is the perfect everyday palette you can get a little bit of depth but really not much so much like the ColourPop palette if you like to add a lot of depth to your looks i would definitely pass on this if you like a softer peachier look i think this is a great option i love this little one and coming in at number 19 is also from anastasia and this is the cosmos palette this palette has moved so many times in my rankings throughout the year at first, I liked it, and then I thought, mm, maybe not so much. And now I'm back to loving it again. I love the browns. Unfortunately, these are the same matte shades we get in every ABH palette. However, they're beautiful and they're easy to work with. I do think this dark matter shade really isn't very buttery and smooth. So that's kind of one thing I don't like. But these shades in general are beautiful. I do think these are really, really pretty for just popping one shimmer all over the lid. If that's what you want to do, you can get some really beautiful ethereal looks with this. Because most of these shades are a little bit lighter, it's very easy for me to work with. This blue actually ends up looking quite a bit more green on me than blue, but I still think it's super beautiful, very easy to work with, and I really did enjoy this one overall. Coming in at number 18 is the other MAC eyeshadow palette I purchased this year, and this is the Embedded in Burgundy palette. This one is very beautiful. This one's ranking higher because the color story is much more cohesive for me. I have just chosen to reach for it more. The tones are very flattering. I love playing with this one. This one is just a great everyday option as well. You can amp it up, you can tone it down. It's just very easy to work with and very, very beautiful. Again, the quality on these is great as well. I think MAC did a really great job. Coming in at number 17 is a drugstore palette that completely hit it out of the park. This is the Milani Gilded Mini Eyeshadow Palette. So this is in Whiskey Business. So in this palette, we get six matte eyeshadows. This year was the year that I learned to appreciate all matte eyeshadow looks. I really gained an appreciation for them. I started incorporating them into my own day-to-day -day, and I think this one is gorgeous. This one I think is supposed to be a dupe for a Charlotte Tilbury palette and I love this. This is such an everyday staple. This is probably one of my favorites from the drugstore ever and I am very very picky about affordable eyeshadow formulas just because I feel like that's the one category where the drugstore just has not caught up yet. So when I find a staple like this at the drugstore, I just want to tell everybody. So I think this is really, really great. I think this is so worth it. They're blendable. They're easy to work with. They'll last all day. And I love working with these. This is definitely one of my favorite ever drugstore palettes. Coming in at number 16 is, the, is another all matte palette. And this is from Huda Beauty. This is the Cool Matte Obsessions. So this year she released the Cool Matte Obsessions and the Warm Matte Obsessions. I picked this one up because I felt like it added a little bit more to my collection. I love this. So this palette has two creams. The rest are regular mattes. I love the cream formula in here. This is like a creamed powder formula similar to Natasha Denona. Very easy to work with. Fun to play with. I love the looks I come out with. I find pinky mauve tones are quite flattering on me and I really really enjoy playing with this one. Again buildable and blendable. Everything I want easy to work with and this is fun if you want to create a look and then pack on a pink shimmer from another palette or something like that but I think Huda did a really really great job with this palette. Coming in at number 15 is from NARS and this is the Endless Nights eyeshadow palette. This is from their holiday collection and it's beautiful. So again NARS does tend to come out with the same thing over and over and over again but 
I don't care. I love their formula. I find their mattes to be very silky, very easy to work with. Their shimmers I also just find very, very smooth. And I think this is a great formula if you have more mature lids, more textured lids, things like that. I think this is a wonderful formula. I have seen that they are coming out with another palette. I think it's launching on Christmas Eve or something like that. So I will be grabbing that one, but unfortunately it will be in next year's palette rankings. But this one I think is beautiful because it does have those mauve tones. I think I compared this to the Retro palette from Natasha Denona. Color story is quite similar. I just think this is fabulous. I really enjoyed working with this palette. And NARS formula never disappoints me. Coming in at number 14 is from Too Faced, and this is the Born This Way Sunset Stripped Palette. So this is one, I think this one came out last year, but I just got it this year, and I absolutely love this one. I love that we get just this whole beautiful neutral brown eyeshadow palette with the occasional pop of pink or gold. I love that the shimmers in here are so beautiful and reflective. They just look so pretty on the lids. When I first got this palette, I used this, I think, for a month straight, and I didn't use anything else because I like this so much. I think this is just great. I know it's a boring neutral palette, but I love this, and I honestly think this is probably the best quality from Too Faced. This is definitely the best quality palette I've seen from them in a really, really long time. So I do hope that they come out with more palettes in this format, this formula. I just think it's a really easy to work with formula while also creating really beautiful looks. And again, they just look so pretty. So I absolutely love this. And at number 13 is from Pat McGrath. This was from her Love Collection this year. This is the Iconic Infatuation palette. So she released three palettes in this collection. And this one is the more mauve tone palette. And at first, this is the one I thought I loved the most, but there is one that is ranking quite a bit higher. The formula in here is so good. These palettes are also made in the US, but the formula is still better than what is in her holiday palettes. So I just wanted to clarify that as well. I absolutely loved this collection. The palettes in here just really, really have my heart. I love this color story so much. Again, easy to work with, fun to play with. I love the looks I get from this. I don't typically reach for this type of pink shimmer, and I think that's why I dropped this one a little bit in the ranking, but honestly, number 13 out of 38 is still really, really good, and I really, truly love this collection. Coming in at number 12 is from NARS, and this is the other quad in their Laguna collection, and this is just the Laguna quad. So I love this because, again, you get a matte, two satins, and then you get one shimmer. This one is just the perfect everyday quad. This is their gorgeous, smooth NARS formula that's easy to work with, blendable, just so flattering on the eyes and because this is those neutral browns it's just very flattering and it's great for every single day if you want. I really love this one. This is one that lived in my makeup bag for quite a while as well because again very every day. So I really did enjoy this one as well. Coming in at number 11 is a big one and this is from Pat McGrath and this is the Sunlit Seduction Mothership Palette. So this one caused quite a stir because seeing the promo photos we all thought we were going to get a lot more purple I think and yeah we just got another pink palette. I love this color story. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I think this pink shade here is probably one of my favorite pink shades of all time. It's just so gorgeous and reflective and just unmatched by any other shade I have in my collection. I love it so much. I think the mattes are beautiful, blendable, easy to work with. This is her Italian formula. The formula in her motherships is unmatched. So, so incredibly good. The problem is that in the last few years she does seem to have changed her Blitz Astrals and she's not really using that baked formula anymore and I think a lot of people were upset about that. That doesn't bother me. I love these shades. I think they're gorgeous. The reason this palette is not ranking higher is because this one shade right here is, dare I say, it's an absolute dud. It is, it kind of feels very creamy. 
and it looks like it's going to be very very pretty but on the eyes not so much it is a very very foiled formula and typically when I'm working with a very foiled eyeshadow I will pick it up on a finger and then I will warm it up in my fingers before applying it because then you'll get that high intensity shine but you're not going to get that super texture enhancing flake. So that's what I tried to do with this. It helped a little bit but still that shade just does not work well at all and to see a dud in a mothership palette that's already $128 that's too much. So for that reason, this one did drop down. I personally love the color story. I do agree that it would be nice to see something new and fun and different in a mothership palette, but I do think this is beautiful. I've definitely reached for it a ton. So I do love it. It's just that I can't rank it any higher when I know there is that shade in here that is just a complete miss. Coming in at number 10 is a brand that was very new to me this year, but that I have really fallen in love with. This is from Alter Ego and this is their Midsummer palette. So Alter Ego tends to create affordable alternatives to high-end palettes. So this one is supposed to be an alternative for the ABH Nouveau. And I tried them side by side because I do have the Nouveau and I loved this. I think they did such a good job with this. One thing I noticed that Alter Ego does very well is they will rearrange the layout of the palette so it actually makes more sense and the color story is a lot more intuitive, but the formula is still phenomenal. This is an affordable formula, but I would say that they are a better formula than even ColourPop. I do think Alter Ego has an amazing, amazing formula. I really love this one compared side by side with the Nouveau. There are some slight tone differences between the two, but they are close. This one is a little bit more neutral, but the shimmers have just as much sparkle and reflect and are absolutely stunning. So I think this palette is gorgeous. I really enjoyed playing with it. Coming in at number nine is from Natasha Denona, and this is the Yucca palette. So this one surprised me in many ways. So seeing this color story, I was not overly attracted to it, but I know I like green eyeshadows. So I decided to pick it up and I actually really, really love this palette. There are shades in here that really aren't going to get much use from me, such as this neon one over here in the corner. But the rest of these I will because I actually love, love, love green eyeshadow and her sparkling foiled formula is one of my absolute favorites because they are the most impactful shimmers maybe in my entire collection maybe and I just love them so much I feel so pretty when I'm wearing one of her sparkling foiled shadows Komarebi is the one that I immediately think of just look how beautiful and shiny and reflective that green is it is beautiful I do really enjoy this palette I will say there's not a lot of range here I do think that a lot of the looks end up coming out pretty similar as well. However, I do really love this palette. Even though initially looking at it, I do not think the color story is that pretty. Once I start playing with it and getting to know the shades, I do think it's absolutely stunning. So I have really loved this palette this year. Coming in at number eight is from Pat McGrath, and this is the Lux Eyeshadow Quad in Passion Fleur. So this quad was released with her stick blushes. And I love this quad. The only reason I dock this points is because I wish there was another lighter matte in here. So I do love this plummy shade, but I wish maybe one of these top two shimmers was just a lighter shade, whether it be a light pink or a light purple. I think that would have been nice. But overall, this is such a beautiful quad. I love the looks I get out of this. I think it's so pretty. They're so high quality. It does say these are made in the U.S., so I would say these are on par with her love collection. Again, not uh, the same as what's in the holiday palettes, but I love this. I love the pink packaging. I love what's in here. I love how the looks come out. I think this palette is stunning. Definitely one of my favorite quads in my collection. I think this was my first quad from Pat McGrath and I am so pleased with it. Coming in at number seven is from NARS and this is the Orgasm Rising eyeshadow palette. So this one came out at the very, very beginning of the year. Definitely very orgasm based. Again, not a, not a special color story, but very, very beautiful, easy to work with, another great everyday option. You can use this for every single day. You can spice it up with a pink. You can add a little bit of depth here, but again, just an all around solid quality 
palette. So even though the color story isn't the most fun, if you're just looking for good quality shadows for every single day, this is a good one. I love this one because it does have those neutral browns, but it's got that twist of pink and that just works for me. Coming in at number six is from Pat McGrath and this is the Sublime Seduction palette. So once again, this one is part of the Love Collection. This one is the Warmer Toned palette of the two. So this one just won because these tones look so good with blue eyes and I always love the way the look comes out. I love the way it makes my eyes pop. So I have to say that this definitely came out on top as my favorite part of the love collection. I just think this palette is so so pretty. I love love using this one. This has definitely been such a favorite and once again I think this formula is so good. I know it's not her typical Italian formula but I think she still did a really good job with this one and I just love working with it. Coming in at number five is from Charlotte Tilbury and this is the Beautyverse palette. This one I absolutely love. So first of all, the packaging on this one is stunning. And then opening this up, we have a nine pan palette. This is a different format for Charlotte Tilbury. Typically we get the really long, thin 12 pans from her. So she did change it up and I love this. So of course I would prefer a palette with more shades, but at the same time, I like this layout. These mattes here are incredible. They are like a cream to powder formula. So much like the Natasha Denona cream to powders, but a little bit softer, I would say they feel very similar to the ones in the House Labs palette. The thing with these though is that they are buildable. They blend so easily, but they don't blend into absolutely nothing like the House Labs can tend to do. So I really do enjoy this. I love this one. This pink is actually a standard matte. This silver in the middle here is kind of like a very wet metallic. It is very, very opaque. These three are definitely a little bit drier, but still very, very beautiful, incredibly sparkly and reflective. And this one up here, the shade Beautyverse, is a sparkly topper, and it is so sparkly, so beautiful. Everything about this palette I really, really do love. I do agree that these pinks and purples really don't have much to work with in the way of mattes, so that is one thing that could have had a little bit more value if this palette had a few more shades. And the same with the silver, it doesn't really have much to work with in here, but at the same time, I think this palette is so beautiful. I love the formulas, I love playing with this one. It's just so pretty. The packaging is unmatched, I love, love, love this palette. Coming in at number four is from Alter Ego, and this is the Mirage palette. So this one is supposed to be an alternative for the Huda Beauty Empowered, which is one I skipped on last year because I did not think I would use that color story, and I was very wrong because I love this palette. So as always, I think Alter Ego has laid out this palette in a way that makes it a little bit more approachable. I think they actually did a really nice job with their cream shades. The bomb shade down here that they tried to emulate is also incredibly beautiful and fun to play with on the lids. All of these shades are absolutely stunning. I don't know how this compares to the Huda palette swatch for swatch. I really don't know in my experience. I find the Alter Ego alternatives tend to be just a little bit more muted than the high end option, but this is still an absolutely stunning, stunning palette. The Empower palette is one I skipped on, like I mentioned, because I didn't think I would ever reach for that type of color story. I was always looking at Empower, but I never ever bought it. And then Alter Ego very kindly sent me this one, and I love this color story, so. I'm not going to buy the Huda now that I have this one, but like I mentioned earlier on, this is one of the very, very best affordable eyeshadow formulas. In my opinion, I think they do such a phenomenal job with this. I love this palette. I think it's gorgeous. I love playing with it. It's definitely deeper and darker, but you can go pretty light, neutral, wearable with these shades down here. So I think this palette's gorgeous. I absolutely love it. And coming in at number three is another palette I almost skipped on. I did not think I would get a lot of use out of it. This is the Patrick Ta Major Dimension 3 palette. So this is his all matte 
palette that he released this year and I had initially been really really hoping that he would come out with maybe a very cool tone palette so his first palette the major dimension was definitely neutral warm tone browns the second palette was very rosy in nature this one I was really hoping for some cool tones so we did get those cool tones in this bottom row of mattes but we also have some very some warmer neutrals up top I did not think I would get so much use out of an all matte palette but this is also the year that I learned to love all mattes so this palette I get so much more use out of than I thought I would again I initially did not think I would be into all matte looks turns out I really really love them my fingers usually still inevitably find their way into a shimmer but I love this palette I think it's so beautiful it's so easy to work with it is such a staple when I just want something really, really quick in the crease, this is pretty much the one I reach for every time. I really do love this. I really don't reach for the creams too much. I don't even like them as liners because if you don't set them, they will transfer like crazy. So I don't recommend that. His matte formula is so, so beautiful. They're so soft and buttery and they just blend together incredibly well. You can get a lot of depth with this. You can go super light with this. I think he just did such a good job and I actually really, really love it. I do wanna see a cool tone palette that has a mix of mattes and shimmers, but this one actually really did win me over. If you're familiar with my channel this year, you probably know exactly what the one and two slots are going to hold, but coming at number two is from Huda Beauty and this is the Pretty Grunge Palette. I did not expect to love this. This is one I almost skipped on. So there's definitely a pattern this year of palettes I almost skipped on but ended up becoming my top favorites of the year. This palette is amazing. So the color story looks very deep, very grungy, almost unapproachable, especially if you are on the fair side, if you prefer much lighter eyeshadow looks, this can definitely look a little bit unapproachable. However, it's not. So these lighter tones down here are the perfect transition for those of us who are on the fair side. You also get this light pink over here. So looking over here, you can create these super easy brown looks, but then you can go kind of pink, you can go purple. You really end up with so many more options than you think. Then you have this silver right here, which is really pretty. Then you have this shade up here, which is a purpley silver. And then this shade Rebel is so interesting because depending on what shades you layer it over top of, it can end up looking very pink. It can look a little more green. It can look a little more silver. It depends what you layer it with. And I think that is fascinating. Regardless, it's an incredibly beautiful reflective shade. This shade here looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun. It's really just a metallic purple in all honesty, but it's still very, very pretty. I think this is such a fun palette to play with. The only thing I don't like about this palette is this black eye gloss up here because I'm just never going to use a shade like that. In past years, she's also included a cream shade. The creams aren't bad, but this is literally just an eye gloss, which again, I'm just never gonna use. So to me, that's a miss, but because the rest of this palette is so, so good, I'm not even holding that against the palette that there is a dud in here. The shade Stand Up is a brown, but it's a very, very creamy metallic. It's absolutely stunning. I just love this palette so much. I did not expect to, but I created so many different looks with this. I played with this so many times. I reach for it all the time. And this is definitely a contender for one of my top favorite Huda Beauty palettes because until this point, I would say Mercury Retrograde has been number one, followed by Rose Quartz. And this one might actually be taking that number one spot. It very well could be. I love this palette, honestly. It's, it's beautiful. And coming in at number one is from Natasha Denona, and this is the I Need a Nude palette. This palette is perfect. I have no complaints with this palette whatsoever. I knew I would love it. The second I saw it revealed, I knew I wanted it and I knew I would use it a ton and I certainly have. This might be my first eyeshadow palette that I hit pan in because I reach for this so often. So this palette I think is the first time she came out with her wet effect formula and that's this shade right here is one of them. They're very, very pretty and they do sort of have that wet effect. They kind of remind me of the Urban Decay Moon Dust shadows, 
but a little bit creamier. You get one of her sparkling foiled formulas in here and that's this shade right in the middle and it's stunning. And then the rest are metallics or mattes. She doesn't have any of her cream to powders in here. She doesn't really need them. These are all very, very neutral shades. This palette is just so beautiful. This has anything I would ever need to create a look. And this is a bold statement, but if I had to get rid of every single palette in my collection and only keep one, I wasn't allowed to consider a sentimental value or anything like that, I would just keep this because it's all I would need. And that's without a doubt. I will say you do only get one deep shade here, but for me personally and my personal preferences, that's more than enough. I love this palette so, so much. So this is definitely my favorite palette of the entire year and it could very well be my very favorite Natasha Denona palette as well. But that is it for me today. Let me know down below what was your favorite palette of the year. I love hearing from you guys so, so much. If you're new here, I hope you'll consider subscribing before you go. I do upload at least three new videos every single week. Thank you again so very much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye!